Welcome back. Just before Easter, we reported on a special event which took place at Te Rao College in Gisborne. The event was held to launch the newly reformatted Maori Bible, Te Paiparatapu, which continues a long tradition of the publication of the Holy Scriptures in Te Reo Maori. We promised you a longer story about the launch, and here it is. From far and wide they gather, from different churches and walks of life, to celebrate a landmark, the first full reformatted edition of the Māori Bible in 60 years. For those who have worked long and hard to give the Bible its new and modern look, it's a day to celebrate and a day to reflect. On many levels, eh? there's, there's a lot of, I guess, deep significance to this day. Uh, the edition that we've worked on was originally translated by a group from about 1946 to 1952. And some of our illustrious leaders were part of that group, people like Apira Nangata. And so it's, we've had some trepidation in some ways dealing with uh, their work. It's taking it, it hasn't, the text hasn't changed. So this is the text uh, which is greatly loved, uh, the 1952 text. Um, and it's, if you like, giving it a, gi giving it a, a spruce up so that it's, it's much more readable, much more understandable, much more accessible. Um, it's the sort of thing you would expect if you've been learning Māori, whether, whether in an immersion school or whether as a second language learner uh, and you want to pick up a Māori book, this is what you would expect to see. Apart from the many volunteers checking and double-checking the changes, the job of reformatting the Bible has fallen on the shoulders of Brenda Crooks, who spent 11 years painstakingly modernising the text. Probably most noticeable is the addition of macrons and that to indicate the length of vowels. You know, when, when this was first printed, people didn't need macrons because they were native speakers and now there's a lot of people who come to the language as, as, as their second language and so marking the vowel length is really helpful. We're just trying to make it look like a modern, what a modern English Bible looks like. They, they just look fantastic. I think those, seeing those Bibles there and, and, and I just, just now I just opened uh, one of the new ones and opened the old one and just had a look at the difference between just the look and feel of the page and it's just amazing. It makes it easier for them to read, knowing who's speaking to whom and when. I suppose I grew up with the Bible and with the old Māori, so there was no difficulty for me. But I must admit that I do find this much easier. <laughs> the reformatted Paipera Tapu, I think that it's wonderful. It's more inviting than the other version. Uh, with the big print and the macrons, it beckons to you to come and read it. And it's just a lot easier, a lot easier to read. Kahuaina no hoki koe, he mea i rapua, he pā kahore i mahoe. My passion is for te reo Māori, also for Jesus, and as a mainly Pākehā institution, the Bible Society, that we need to partner more with Māori. They deserve to have a, a flash-looking Bible like everybody else. The, the feedback we're getting from people who are using it, they're saying it's much easier not only to read, but to read aloud, which is really one of the key essential things for us because we want this Bible to be used in that setting. And so making it easy is uh, it's an absolute joy to see that it's working. Yeah. For me, I see the use in my mahi um, as leader for this ministry in the Salvation Army, it's just going to be huge because a lot of our Māori in the Salvation Army are non-speakers, well they're second language learners, they're actually getting back into their Māori tanga, they're joining courses and what have you. This Bible is going to be just such a taonga for them, very special. Oh yeah, he taonga tērā, ana. As well as the Bible in book form, an e-book is also available in the hope that even more Māori will engage with the Bible. We've got to go through all the modern technology that we've got, but that's not my job. <laughs> I'll leave that to the younger generation like Don and them. They'll be able to do that quite easily. You're putting it on your iPad? <laughs> I've got to learn how to drive that yet. <laughs> you know, the purpose of translating you know, scripture in the first place into mother tongues is to make it accessible and to I guess to open up the the treasure of scripture to all those who who want to seek it. Uh, we also have I guess the the interesting developments of what we might call Māori Renaissance 
So we have new younger generations who are growing up very fluent in te reo Māori um, and, and accessing all sorts of resource and material. And we just want to make this taonga, it's an ancient taonga that's been handed down by our ancestors, accessible to these new generations and, um, so that they'll see the value for themselves.